All right, last two interactions that we're going to discuss are hydrophobic and aromatic interactions. So hydrophobic interactions, as you remember from PCHEM, uh, the putting hydrophobic stuff inside water, it's not good for the entropy of the system. Uh, the water has to organize itself around the hydrophobic residues, and that isn't as good as just having the water, you know, not interacting with it. So in terms of hydrophobic interactions, the hydrophobic residues, if you remember the way that I organized everything, we have the family, which is Lu, Ili, and Val. Uh, we have the starting point uh, amino acids from which all the other amino acids are derived, which is glycine and alanine. Remember, glycine just has the H, alanine has the methyl. And then to get all the other amino acids, you pretty much just change around what the methyl is, what's attached to the methyl. Uh, we had those two random amino acids, uh, proline and methionine. Even though methionine has a sulfur in it, which is very electronegative, it's in the middle of the uh, it's in the middle of the residue. So the thioeth since it's a it's a thioether sulfur, uh, that's not going to make the residue uh, polar and make the amino acid hydrophilic. And then we have phenylalanine, which is just the phenyl ring attached to alanine. Okay, um, cysteine. I put a little separately because at physiological pH, the sulfur, um, it's going to be pretty much nonpolar. But if you raise the pH, okay, if you raise the pH above its pKa, what can happen is the sulfur can become negatively charged. All right? You can deprotonate the cysteine, and when you deprotonate the cysteine, uh, it's going to be negatively charged, and then it's not going to participate in hydrophobic interactions. Um, physiological pH though, it's typically protonated, and then you're going to sequester this residue inside your hydrophobic binding pockets. Uh, but if you were to go to an extreme case where you really raise the pH, it'll be negatively charged, and then instead of being a hydrophobic interaction, it'll be classified as a ionic interaction. And then two more amino acids that are technically amphipathic, okay? With tryptophan, right, this is the bird beak, this is the polar part, and then with tyrosine, you have the OH, which is going to be the polar part. But um, overall, there's a lot of carbon, there's a lot of hydrogen. So overall, tryptophan and tyrosine, more often, they're, more often than not, they're going to be hydrophobic rather than hydrophilic. Okay, there's just so many carbons present in the tryptophan and the tyrosine. Okay, and the hydrophobic interactions, what those help do is they help bind to a given target because you want to get the amino acids out of the water solution. Now the fourth and last type of interaction we're going to talk about is aromatic interactions. All right, And aromatic interactions, really the way I just think about them is they're dipole-dipole interactions or they're dipole-charged interactions because really when you have that aromatic ring, that's going to generate some sort of dipole and then it's going to interact with nearby charges. Okay, nearby charges or nearby dipoles. Four amino acids that you want to remember are tryptophan, tyrosine, phenylalanine, and histidine. And what ends up happening is the ring right here. Okay, the ring is going to be a delta negative. Okay, and then anything that's attached to the ring, like this hydrogen, is going to be a delta positive. All right, so that's the type of dipole or the type of charge that develops inside your aromatic rings, and they can interact with nearby molecules. Like for example, the ring here could interact with like a nearby lysine. Okay, so lysine, you could have a charge dipole interaction, or you could have the uh, positive H, you could have that interact with, let's say we have, a nearby aspartate okay so really the only thing that's different on the right is that it involves an aromatic ring all right another concept that was discussed was the whole concept of ring stacking this is your just your typical dipole dipole interaction the ring is considered a delta negative and then the attached H's are delta positives and then they can interact with each other. Okay, so hydrophobic interactions, aromatic interactions, that finishes up the four types of non-covalent inter interactions that we discussed in chapter four.